Welcome back to First Year Undergraduate Microeconomics. Let's start our analysis of monopoly behaviour. Now, the first thing to note is that the costs for a monopolist look like the costs for any other firm. So we can draw our marginal cost, our average total cost, and our average variable cost for a monopoly, just like we could for any other business. I'm going to start by just drawing the marginal cost curve. Here's our marginal cost curve. I'll just have it sloping upwards like that, and let's label it. Now, the difference from monopoly is that unlike a price-taking firm, the monopoly faces the market demand for the product, and the market demand is usually sloping down. So we've drawn our market demand on here, and again, let's label it. Remembering that, of course, the market demand is also the firm demand for a monopolist because it is the only seller in the market. Now, we need to work out the profit maximising decision for the monopoly. Well, the profit maximisation rule is still the same as it was for a perfectly competitive firm. To maximise profits, the monopoly wants to set its output where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. The same as for a perfectly competitive firm. Now we have marginal cost here. Marginal revenue for a perfectly competitive firm, well that was easy because marginal revenue was the price. Every time you sold another unit, you just got the price for that unit. If the price was $100 per unit and you sold the first unit, you got $100. If you sold another unit, you got another $100. So for a perfectly competitive firm, price was marginal revenue. But what about for a monopoly? What is marginal revenue? Here I've just got the demand curve for the monopoly. And to work out what marginal revenue is going to be, well let's just ask, how much extra money does the monopoly make when it sells one extra unit? That's our definition of marginal revenue. So let's start with a price on here. Let's suppose that the monopoly decides to sell this quantity here, which I'll label by Q0. And let's say it does it at the press price here. So that price here, we'll just label by P0. Now, let's suppose that the monopoly sells one more unit. So it's now going to want to produce an extra unit. So this amount here, and again, I'll just label that by Q0 plus 1. Now, what price is it going to set for that unit? Well, it's going to want to sell all of its output for the highest price possible. And that price is up here. And I'll label that by P1. Two things to note here. First is, we're using our assumption that the monopoly has to sell all of its output at one price. So when the monopoly increased its output by one unit, it had to lower the price, not just on the extra unit, but on all of the units that it sells. So the monopoly can't, say, set a price of P0 for its first Q0 units and then say, hey, if you want an extra unit, I'll give you a discount just on that unit. The monopoly is thinking about, what price do I set? How much do I want to sell to maximise my profits? And the monopolist thought experiment is, I'm only able to set one price. So think about this as being before the monopoly goes to the market, before the monopoly sets its price that it's going to charge consumers, how does it work out that optimal price? So it's setting a single price for all units it sells. That was our assumption. Second point to note is that when the monopolist wants to sell an extra unit, the monopoly increases quantity, but decreases the price. The only way it can convince consumers to buy more output is if it charges them a lower price. Why? Well, because it always wants to set the highest possible price to sell its quantity. So if it wants to change its quantity, the monopoly has to change the price that it sets. So now, let's look at revenue and how revenue changes. Let's start off with the initial price of P0 and the quantity of Q0. 
Well, what's revenue at that price and quantity? Well, it's simply given by the price times the quantity. So the initial revenue at price P0 and quantity Q0 for monopoly is simply the black shaded area. So let's write that in. So initial revenue, initial revenue, equals P0 times Q0. OK, what's the revenue when it increases its output? When the monopolist increases its output to Q0 plus 1, it drops its price to P1, so its revenue is going to be simply P1 times Q0 plus 1. So it's going to be this red shaded area here. So we know that the final revenue, the revenue after it increases its output, final revenue, that's just going to be equal to P1 times Q0 plus 1, a new quantity. So, what's the marginal revenue equal to? Well, it's just the difference between the initial revenue and the final revenue, so that's pretty easy. Let's put the initial revenue back on here. Remember, it was a black shaded area, so let's put that back on there. And uh, I'll cross hatch it the other way this time so it becomes really clear. So, what's our change in revenue or our marginal revenue when we produce an extra unit? Well, notice that the marginal revenue has two bits. When we sell an extra unit, we get the price on that unit, P1, and that's just what this bit of red shaded area here means. It's not cancelled out by the black area, it just means when we sell one more unit we get the price of that unit. Well that's pretty clear. So the first thing to note is that the marginal revenue, the first bit of a marginal revenue, is going to be equal to the price we get for the extra unit, P1. But that's not where we can stop. We can't stop there because notice that the marginal revenue, the red shaded area, minus the black shaded area, notice that that has a negative bit there, the negative black area here. That's revenue we lose when we sell an extra unit. Why do we lose it? Because we've got to drop the price. So that area is simply equal to the drop in price, our change in price, times our initial quantity. So we can say that the marginal revenue is P1 minus our initial quantity times the drop in price we drop the price to sell one more unit. Notice immediately that that means that the marginal revenue when you sell another unit as a monopoly, when you face this downward sloping demand curve, the marginal revenue is less than the price because it's the price take away the reduction on inframarginal revenue. We call this inframarginal revenue because it's the amount we previously sold, the units that are now inframarginal, as opposed to the marginal unit, it's the inframarginal quantity times the change in price when we drop the price on all units to sell another unit. So now we can put our marginal revenue curve on here. We know that at a quantity of Q0, the marginal revenue curve is going to be less than the price. It's going to be price minus that quantity times price change. And similarly, at a price at a quantity I mean, Q0 plus 1, the marginal revenue will be less than the price. So we know that the marginal revenue curve is going to be sitting somewhere underneath here. I'll deliberately take it over the horizontal axis. There's no reason why marginal revenue must always be positive. It may become negative at some quantities. So we can now call this our marginal revenue curve. Oops, marginal revenue. OK, let's put it all together. Let's go back to our standard diagram. We've got marginal cost, we've got demand, but now we need to draw marginal revenue. So let's draw the marginal revenue curve. You can show mathematically that it's always going to be steeper than the demand curve for the simple case we have here. So I'll draw that again. That red curve is the marginal revenue curve. 
And now we can solve for the profit maximizing decision for our firm. The firm is going to want to set output where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. That's this point here where marginal cost and marginal revenue intersect. So the firm's optimal quantity is going to be back here. And I'll call that QM, M for monopoly. Now, what price does the monopoly want to set? Well, if it's producing that level of output, it wants to sell it for the maximum possible price. It wants to maximise its profits. That's one of our assumptions. So, the monopolist will set the price by the demand curve to get the maximum price it can for its output. And that will be PM. So we've now got the monopoly quantity, the monopoly price that will maximise profits for the monopoly. Final thing to do is to ask, well, how much profit is the monopoly making at its profit maximising decision? Well, to do that, we have to put the average total cost curve back on here. So let's do that. Let's pop an average total cost curve on here. And remember, the average total cost curve still has to cut marginal cost at a minimum. That'll do. Average total cost. So for this particular monopoly, for this particular monopoly, well, at its output QM, its average cost, total average cost, oops, is here, just above the bottom. So this is its average total cost. And its profit, well, its profit is just going to be the difference between the price and the average total cost at its optimal quantity. So it's going to be given by this rectangle here. So the rectangle between price and average total cost at the optimal quantity. I won't try and shade that in because it will become completely messy and unable to read anything. So the key takeaway though is that for a price setting firm as opposed to a price taking firm, for a firm like a monopoly, but it's actually a general result for any firm that sets the price, if it faces a downward sloping demand curve for its product, then the marginal revenue curve will be below the demand curve. It will be steeper in general than the demand curve. And when the business sets its profit maximising quantity to maximise profits, it will set that quantity where marginal revenue equals marginal cost, and then set the highest price that it can sell its output for. And that will maximise the business's profit. That's our output profit maximising solution for the monopoly. OK, thanks for listening. We're going to start analysing in a bit more detail the consequences of the monopoly behaviour in our next presentation.